Anti-doping will be one of the most important parts of your tennis life, so here's what you need to know. I'm Stuart Miller and I'm in charge of the Tennis Anti-Doping Programme. The anti-doping programme applies to all professional tennis events and because you're playing on junior circuits, you will also be subject to anti-doping rules. You could be subject to testing at any time and any place. This can be before an event, after an event, or even at home or where you're training. The reason we have an anti-doping programme is to protect the health and rights of tennis players we want to be able to give you confidence that the player or players you're playing against aren't doping and getting an unfair advantage. The consequences are serious for players who take drugs to help them win. Wayne Desnick was caught doping three times and eventually banned for 15 years. I think it's, it's good for tennis that they're basically getting him off the tour. That's the end of his, his career. He was a cheat, so it's good for, for everyone um, involved in tennis that, that he's, he's been dealt with in, in the right way and um, yeah, if anything like that comes up against in the future um, I hope it's, it's dealt with uh, in a similar way. Drugs like cannabis or cocaine don't help you win matches but if you're caught taking them even if you're not playing in a tournament you will be banned. Dan Evans took cocaine and was banned for one year. It was just a bad, bad time. Uh made a terrible decision and yeah it's um you know something obviously i regret now and but try try not to to look back at it it's um it's, you know tough time what with it with what happened and we just had to get through the last year and then start, start up again it's um you know it's a difficult time but you know ho hopefully now it's we've seen the back of it it's not easy to just start from nothing and go again Dan knew he'd made the wrong choice, but some players don't know that the drugs or medicine that they're taking are on the prohibited list. I wanted to let you know that a few days ago I received a letter from the ITF that I had failed a drug test at the Australian Open. For the past 10 years, um, I have been given a medicine called Mildrenat by my doctor. It also has another name of meldonium, which I did not know. It's very important for you to understand that for 10 years, this medicine was not on WADA's ban list, and I had been legally taking the medicine um, for the past 10 years. But on January 1st, the rules had changed, and meldonium became a prohibited substance. There's a list of prohibited substances that you're not allowed to take. And this list of prohibited substances is very long and we don't ask everybody to know every substance by name. However, you should know where you can find the list. And the best place to go is the Tennis Anti-Doping Programme app, which is free to download for Android and iPhone. And all you do is show this to somebody who is giving you something that you're not sure about the contents and they can check whether you should be taking it or not. Tennis players, like any other member of the public, are subject to illnesses. And if you have an illness, then if you need to take a prohibited substance, you need permission to do that. And that permission is called a therapeutic use exemption. So, whenever you go to a doctor and he or she says they need to prescribe you a medication, Tell them that you're a tennis player who is subject to anti-doping rules and that if that medication is prohibited, then you need a therapeutic use exemption. There's information on the Tennis Anti-Doping Programme app as to how you go about applying for a TUE. Supplement use is one of the biggest causes of violations of the anti-doping programme. What do we mean by supplements? Anything that isn't part of your normal diet, energy drinks, pills and tablets, the anti-doping program doesn't recommend that you take any supplements. If you've been selected for testing, you will be asked by a doping control officer to provide identification. That means they can be sure that they've asked the right person to provide the sample. They'll then ask you to accompany them to the doping control station. There'll be forms to fill in, and of course, you'll provide either a urine or a blood sample as part of that process. 
If you are asked to provide a urine sample by the doping control officers, you will need to pee in this pot. You will be asked to transfer it into these two pots. Make sure that the sample remains with you until it has been properly sealed. If you're asked to provide a blood sample, the doping control officers will use a kit like this. It will only take a minute. When you've provided the sample, filled in all the paperwork, signed your name on the form, then that's the process finished. You don't have to go there by yourself. You can take your coach with you or any other representative who you feel comfortable having there in the doping control station, including a parent if you so wish. If there is a language barrier between you and the doping control officer, you can also ask for an interpreter to be present and one will be provided for you. It's your responsibility of what's in your body. And if you fail a test, there are significant consequences. All of your results will be disqualified. You'll lose any prize money, ranking points and titles that you've earned, both during the event where you fail the test and at all events after that. You'll also have to deal with the social consequences, which includes talking to your family, media interest, and being labelled as somebody who has violated the anti-doping programme. The reason that the anti-doping programme provides information to players, like this video, is to ensure that players don't make a mistake. If you're unsure about anything, you can look on our website, you can download the app, or you can even give us a call, we're always here to help.